All right, look, there's already several videos out there talking about million dollar house here, million dollar house there, or probably one of my favorite types of videos to watch. What type of house can I afford for a million bucks? I mean, a million bucks is amazing clickbait, but with the yearly median household income in the US being $62,000 and the average home for sale in the US being $231,000, let's be a little more realistic here. In this particular video, I'm gonna talk about the top five cities with more realistic price points to invest in in 2020. Coming up. Welcome back everybody, such a pleasure to be back. My name is Alex Bolotran. If you are new here, welcome. I talk about real estate tricks, tips, and topics. So, if you're in the real estate business, aspiring to join the real estate business, or you just want some guidance or references to everything that the real estate industry encompasses, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Let's jump into it. So I was away for a little while. I was actually backpacking through Europe. Amazing. And although I was lost the majority of the time because Verizon sucks in Europe, who would have known? I managed to stumble around and find some amazing architecture, real estate, and tried my best to shoot photos like Peter McKinnon. Wow. Yeah, I'm clearly no Peter McKinnon. So with all that travel and countless hours sitting on Flix buses, I had plenty of time to think about what my next real estate moves were gonna be. And everything that I was looking up was million dollar homes and you need a million dollars or some variation of million dollars in real estate. I mean, the two were just black. And to tell you the truth, I don't have a million dollars to throw down on one multi-million dollar spec home. And to be completely honest with you, even if I did, I don't think I would throw it down on one multi-million dollar spec home. Now, multi-million dollar multi-family home or commercial property, absolutely. The ultra luxury single family residential real estate is, uh, it's a little too niche for my wallet. And then I thought about how intimidating it would be for someone with zero real estate experience reading these exact same articles and thinking to themselves, uh, yeah, real estate investing is completely unobtainable. When the truth is that real estate investing is very obtainable. Then I thought about my situation. I mean, I'm originally from California, but I started investing in rental properties out of state because I wouldn't have been able to get my foot inside of the real estate investment door in California. I figured invest out of state until I can safely afford to purchase properties in California. So what I'm gonna do is look at homes that are for sale between 220,000 and 245,000, keeping us well within that $231,000 median. And in case you're wondering, the answer is yes. I have been to each one of these cities to check out the local real estate. I'm not just randomly throwing this list together. So this isn't exactly gonna be scientifically data driven, and this isn't to say that these are the best price brackets to invest in in these particular cities either. When choosing an investment property, you have to take multiple things into account, not just the price. Now, once again, this is my list of cities in the US that I think are worth investing in. Apart from the price points and the data points that I'm using to qualify these cities, there are other aspects that I'm also taking into account when qualifying these cities. The first one being travelability. Is that a real word? Travelability. Word. Ah, it is. And what I mean by this is, is there a good airport? Is it easy to get to and from this city? Does it have accessible highways? It plays a vital role for my second point, which is attractions and career opportunities. Now I'm compiling these two together because in terms of real estate, they're really one and the same. The logic behind that being, is there a reason for people to come to any particular city? Whether it's for work, conventions, business, school, concerts, or events. In all of these cases, people need some type of housing, whether it's a short-term stay in an Airbnb or a long-term lease. When it comes to Airbnb, they aren't necessarily my favorite use of real estate, but it is currently an option. If you wanna watch a video about my opinions on Airbnb, I'm gonna go on ahead and link it up above. Keep watching this video first. The next one is value, how much home you get at this particular price point. And last is growth, which is how much the city and the value of your investment will grow over the long run. Folks, this isn't gonna be scientific. In fact, there will be cities with better statistics over one another in this very list. This is a little more of a realtor's intuition, the intangible ingredient that comes with being so involved in the real estate world. With that said, let's get started with this list. Number five, Phoenix, Arizona. For starters, they have a great airport. It takes you pretty much anywhere within a moment's notice. You're roughly about two hours away from Los Angeles and roughly about an hour and a half away from Las Vegas. 
or an eight hour drive to Los Angeles for all you road warriors like myself. Even if you run out of things to do in Phoenix, you're a stone's throw away from Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Now Phoenix isn't exactly a college town, although they do have a lot of great schools. Phoenix is a little bit more of a retirement community. And a lot of people from Los Angeles retire in Phoenix because of the proximity to Los Angeles, as well as favorable tax rates. In fact, I know several agents that have licenses in both California and Arizona so that they can conduct business in both states. Plenty of golf and career opportunities as well as attractions. Professional hockey team, basketball, baseball, and football, as well as the Grand Canyon and Flagstaff, which means that there's a very healthy need for housing. Between the $220,000 and $245,000 price range, you're getting a home that's built anywhere between 2000 and 2015, depending on the neighborhood that you're looking at. Most of these houses have a very generous three to four bedrooms with 1,300 and 1,900 square feet. Now I'm getting all my information via Zillow because I don't have access to their local MLS to run my own reports. This past year, the Phoenix real estate market rose by 5.5%, with projections in 2020 going up to 2.6 to 3.7%. Now, this city isn't exactly exploding in population, but it does have that steady stream of retirees, and it doesn't seem like it's slowing anytime soon. And remember, retirees have money. Remember, real estate is a long game, and the Phoenix market will get that long-term return. Number four, Kansas City, Missouri, or Missouri, just the Kansas City barbecue alone should be enough for you to invest in real estate there. Just for the record, I am kidding. Don't base your real estate investments off of how good the barbecue is. In terms of mobility, you're pretty much in the center of the country. You're roughly about a three to four hour flight from anywhere in the US. In terms of job prospects, Kansas City is pretty diverse. Everything from corporate all the way to agriculture. Kansas City is also surrounded by a lot of middle sized cities. So a lot of people from these medium sized cities go to Kansas City for entertainment. You have Kansas City Speedway, soccer, football, baseball, museums. Yes, I know that Kansas Speedway is technically not in Missouri, but are we really gonna get into that debate right now? along with plenty of good universities and career opportunities, with unemployment being at 4.4%. Now, most of the homes that are priced within our given criteria are roughly about 25 minutes away from downtown Kansas City, but they are brand spanking new. You can find a 2019 home for four bedrooms, three baths, 1,800 square feet. The real estate market in this particular area has been rising annually at 4.4%, and that's because Kansas City is growing exponentially. Kansas City will soon outgrow that $220,000 to $245,000 price range. So if you're going to invest there, invest as soon as you can. Number three, Houston, Texas. I swear I'm not choosing these cities because of how good the barbecue is. Although wouldn't it be ironic if how good the barbecue is, is how good the investment opportunities are? Houston actually has the most homes between the $220,000 and $245,000 price range. In terms of travel, you have an international airport. Entertainment, the works. Football, baseball, basketball, soccer, not to mention that Houston is a major tourist destination, as well as an economic powerhouse. In fact, when it comes to real estate investing, Houston is one of those super obvious cities to invest in. Read any article that has to do with real estate investing, and chances are Houston will pop up somewhere within that article. I mean, I feel a little bit of a sellout putting it on my list, but it really is one of the best places to invest in real estate. Houston boasts an impressive 3.5% unemployment rate. Houston has the most Fortune 500 headquarters and job opportunities in pretty much any field that you can think of. Like I said, Houston has the largest selection within our pricing parameters. Most of the homes within this price range are anywhere between 1990 and 2010, ranging from 1,500 square feet to 2,300 square feet, and between three to five bedrooms. So in terms of biggest bang for your buck, Houston takes the cake and runs with it. This past year, the housing market in Houston grew by 7.2%, and conservative estimates for 2020 expect that the market will rise between 3.5 to 4.5%. Number two on my list, Denver, Colorado. I've done road trips to pretty much every state in the US, and the nicest state in the lower 48 states is definitely Colorado. I love California, but California just has the beach, but Colorado has the Rockies. If you've never driven on Interstate 70 between Glenwood Springs and Denver, you owe it to yourself to do so. Just don't do it in a snowstorm, don't ride your brakes for too long, and if you're gonna ride in the winter, make sure to pack tire chains, because there are several signs everywhere reminding you that if you don't have tire chains during the winter, that's a thousand dollar fine. Anyway, enough about my travel misadventures. Let's get back to real estate. Now, Denver real estate is gonna be super interesting. 
Denver or the Mile High City, it is a major tourist destination. Not only can you live the city life, but drive outside the city limits and you're river rafting, snowboarding, hiking, biking, fishing, skiing, relaxing in natural springs, or if you're a gearhead like myself, racing up Pikes Peak. Just uh, please don't go unconscious racing up Pikes Peak because of lack of air. In terms of things to do, there's no shortage of them. Denver International Airport literally takes you anywhere you wanna go. Although that airport always seems to be delayed, I think it's because of the weather or whatever conspiracy theory you wanna conjure up. Denver has a 3% unemployment rate, which means that people from all walks of life wanna go there to take advantage of the job opportunities. And this is where Denver gets very interesting. It's kind of running out of space. I mean, they can't really develop into the Rockies, and if they do, it's certainly not gonna be affordable housing. Not to mention that it's pretty much all national park, which means that they can't build there anyway. And because of that, Denver seems like it's gonna hit the Los Angeles and New York effect, which means that it's gonna run out of space and prices are just gonna skyrocket. I mean, as is within the price point of the 220 to 245,000 on the west side of Denver, the only thing you can really get are condos. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but it's gonna happen. Denver has that healthy balance between tourism, middle class, upper class, students, military, making it an investor's dream. Now, in terms of biggest bang for your buck, Denver would actually rank dead last on almost any list, not just mine. In fact, at these prices, a lot of homes in Denver are actually fixer-uppers. But the reason it's number two on my list is because it's still possible to swoop on great homes at affordable prices. There will come a time when this won't be the case. Now for houses that are more comparable to the other city's prices, you definitely have to go up in price. Unfortunately, for this video, I'm not gonna do that. At the $230,000 price range, you can find a few remodeled homes that were built between 1950 and 1965. Two to three bedrooms, one to one and a half bath, and anywhere between 900 to about 1,300 square feet. But Denver has been rising consistently at 4% for several years, which is pretty impressive all on its own. Add to the fact that the median price range in Denver is currently at $440,000, that's a pretty good return. Now, before I get to the number one city on my list, go on ahead and smash that subscribe button. And uh, while you're down there, just go on ahead and smash that like button as well. This one's unique because it's actually the smallest city on my list and it's Omaha, Nebraska. But it's the city with the most growth potential. Omaha's on an upward trajectory unlike any other city that I've seen in the US. Omaha's in the beginning processes of expanding its airport. It's considered Silicon Prairie, so Google, Facebook, Amazon are all in Omaha. TD Ameritrade, Geico, Berkshire Hathaway. Hell, even Warren Buffett lives in Omaha and he's the master at finding deals. And that's exactly what Omaha is, the best deal in real estate. Don't believe me? I'll prove it to you. Center of the country making it super easy to get anywhere within the US. International travel is a little hard, but like I said, they're expanding Epley Airfield. Berkshire Hathaway shareholders meeting, College World Series, Hell, it's even where Bill Gates comes to wild out and pop bottles with Warren Buffett. Omaha has the most millionaires per capita than any other city in the US. While Omaha, Nebraska recently announced a new professional soccer team, it's called Union and they're gonna start playing in the 2020 season. They are itching for more professional teams. Huh, TD Ameritrade Park, CHI Health Center, they seem pretty eager to get a professional team in there. You can purchase homes for as low as $20,000. Let me repeat that one more time. You can purchase a home for $20,000. Okay, yes, they do need a lot of work, but us real estate investors turn rusty pennies into shiny objects that everyone wants. Two major universities, UNO and Creighton, or Crichton, I don't know how to pronounce it. Creighton, or Crichton, is one of the best universities in the US. Nightlife in several different pockets of the city. Benson, Old Market, Downtown, up and coming breweries, and plenty of careers, medical, corporate, agriculture. So what can you get in Omaha for 220 to $245,000? While there are a lot of two to four bedroom homes with 1,200 to 1,900 square feet built between 1985 to the early 2000s, it's completely possible to get a brand spanking new house within this price range. They may fall into the cookie cutter category, but it is a brand new house. Omaha has a long-term real estate potential on lock. Even though Omaha has been doing well, ranging between three to 4% annual growth, it's only gonna explode in value once the airport is expanded and they get more professional teams here because that will drive more people to the city. And once they try the food, they will fall in love with Omaha. Omaha has actually snuck into a couple of nationally ranked foodie cities. Omaha may go unnoticed now, but Omaha is gonna be talked about by some of the biggest real estate titans in the game. Look into it. 
And that's it for this list, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Do you guys like the cities that I chose? Which actually brings me to the question of the day. What other cities do you think are next to explode in value and why? Go ahead and comment in the comment section down below. And that is it for this video, folks. If you found this video informative or entertaining, because everyone knows that real estate is the most entertaining topic on all of YouTube, go ahead and smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you wanna keep up to date with everything that I'm doing in real estate, go on ahead and give me a follow on Instagram. If you wanna check out some more of my videos, I'm gonna go on ahead and link them here and here. Other than that, catch you guys next week. Peace.